If you could turn with me into Psalm 63, verses 1 to 3, I just want to be able to read to you this scripture. Uh, David here talks about, he says, and the scripture should be behind me. It says, Oh God, you are my God. Early will I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. My flesh longs for you in a dry and a thirsty land where there is no water. So I've looked for you in the sanctuary to see your power and your glory because your loving kindness is better than life. My lips shall praise you. We have to understand God created each and one of us for himself. That we, we are to search for him. That we are to worship and that we are to be with him. Each one of us were created with that void inside of us that without God, we will always feel empty. Doesn't matter what we search either, like maybe Jeff, that he was living his own life, but that on the inside, there will be a void to fill that void, either with substance, either with relationship, either with fame, business, money, whatever you call it, that void can only be filled by knowing God. Doesn't matter where you search in mean, history and time and time proves the testimony after testimony where people live for themselves trying to fill that void but nothing can be filled because it is only filled by us knowing God. It is us seeking after God and David talks about here it says, Oh God that early will I seek you. My flesh longs for you. My soul thirsts for you. David begins to realize that God, this is what I want. This is what I seek. This is, this is what I cannot live without. The word seek is mentioned 313 times in the Bible. To seek means to aggressively pursue. Then nothing stops you from getting it. Has anybody in this place ever had a, such a pursuit in their life that you were so convinced that this is the thing that I wanted to do? Anybody here? So back in the day, I don't know if you can put up the picture. Back in the day, when I was a young, young man, <laughs> I was convinced I was going to be a rapper. I just, I was convinced. I was, I was so passionate for it. I was seeking anything and everything. I listened to rap music. I dressed like it. I acted like it. I spent money on it. I mean, you can't convince me otherwise that I was not going to be a rapper. <laughs> it was something that in me that I'm just like, man, I'm going to do this. I'm going to make it. You know, I'm going to prove to my family. So my dad got the belt. I was like, I'll show you. <laughs> oh, man. And, and that was the days where the hungry gen started. So you imagine what our pastor had to deal with. Like, you guys are going to preach the world. I'm like, I would be a rapper. I'm not going to be no preacher. <laughs> it's like, I'll talk to you after this meeting. <laughs> and that was, that was, I was so passionate. I was so, I was seeking for, I mean, I was spending money. I dressed, I, I was like, if you looked at me, I was good at it. I mean, I was, I was spitting rhymes, whatever it was. I had the, this, these visors, you know, without the top. I was put on the side, put it up. Like I was, I was wearing these clothes and it's like, I was passionate for, it. I was seeking it. And, and some of us in life, we have certain things that, that we, we spent our whole life into pursuing after it said this is the thing that I need and without it I cannot live without I, I am not fulfilled I'll be nothing it could be a career it could be the, the girl or a boy that could be the marriage it could be kids it could be finance whatever that thing is we have to understand it is a supplement for the cry and the thirst that we have on the inside that cries out for the living God and David says that my soul and my flesh longs for you, God. He wants to redirect our focus to begin to say that it is those things that we are craving, but it will not fill us. It will only leave us empty because the true enjoyment, the true peace, the true joy comes from knowing Jesus. It's pursuing after God. The question is never... If we are seeking, the question is what or who we are seeking. And it's never like, oh, I'm not a seeker. You know, I'm just, I'm just living my own life, doing my own thing. Yeah, you're seeking self-pleasure. 
It has never thought, oh, I'm not like these people who are pursuing money or doing this. Each one of us, we have something right now in our lives that we are currently pursuing as our focus is our energy, is our time, is our investment, is, is everything that is about us. We're pursuing after it. But I want to encourage you this morning as we're going to have next three days and as we're going to uh, pursue after God is that make your hearts cry. Make your focus and, and your energy of pursuing after God because from him all the blessings come. Amen church? When you see someone that is good at something it's never by a mistake. It's because their energy, their focus, their attention is put onto it. You can, have a, you can never have a strong relationship with God if your focus and your energy and your attention is not on it. People who have who go in depth and go further with God is because they put the time into that relationship with God. Is they put their focus on God. Is they put their energy and their love and begin to say, God, I love you. I want to go after you. God, I pursue you. You're everything that I want. Without you, God, I am nothing. Yes, I have these things on the side, but God, you are you orchestrate every event in my life. Without you, I'm nothing. The moment you take your hand off my life, I'm just like a vapor in the wind. The best men, the best people, the most talented, the most gifted people in this world are only because of what God has given to them in their lives. The moment God begins to lift up His grace out of their lives, out of my life, we are nothing. We're left to our own destruction. We're left to our own weaknesses. When we are weak with God, temptation is strong. But when we are strong with God, the temptation is weak. I like uh, one time Pastor Rickard preached this message. I still remember to this day. He says that, that we are always in the middle ground. And the more we come closer to God, the further we go away from Satan. The more we go away from God, the weaker we are with, uh, with uh, the more we go away from God, the, the stronger temptation and, and, and Satan is in our lives. It is the direction that we pursue. And it's not that we can say, oh, I'm just going to sit in the middle ground. We always are pursuing some. We're always heading to that direction. And it's not that, oh, today I'm this or that. It's you, you feed what you want to build and you starve what you want to kill in your life. If you want a strong relationship with God, you have to feed it. It is not by mistake that somebody comes and overcomes certain weaknesses in their life and lives in a blessed marriage and lives in a blessed family and has blessings from God. It's not by mistake. It is because somebody pursues after God and says, God, I can't rely on my own strength. I need you in this situation. And God begins to come through. Why? Because they pursue in the direction where God is and the temptation becomes weaker. We can never let go. We can never get rid of temptation. But you are much stronger. Why? Because you're pursuing God. Some people are like, well, God, the devil is so strong today, today on me. He's just, he's just defeating me. My question is, where are you going? Where is your contention? Where is your focus at? Because that determines how strong you are. When we are strong with God, temptation becomes weak. And God gives us that opportunity. And David reminds us, he says, the early will I seek you. Early will I seek why? Before I encounter anything, before I do anything, before I am put the weight of the, of the world on my shoulders, I will seek God because God is my only strength. From Him is my strength. Whom do I in heaven but you, God? And earth has nothing that I desire. My strength and my fortress is in God alone and on Him I will wait all day long. In Psalms, uh, Psalm 10 verse 4, it says that the wicked in his proud countenance does not see God. God is in none of his thoughts. God's definition for wickedness is people who don't seek him. People who don't seek him. And it's never that I'm not seeking anything. We are always seeking something. The question is what or who are we seeking? It's just a change of direction, the change of focus, the change of attention that we put on that begins to bring us to a place where, where we are either satisfied, where we are blessed, or we are deprived of what we are meant to be. Deep down in our soul, we always crave 
for that fulfillment. That's why many people go into different religions. They, they begin to seek uh, spiritual things, the universe, whatever you call it. They, they begin to look for that thing to fill that void and they do not re understand, not realize it only comes from us spending time with Jesus. As this church was founded, it was, we would never be in a place that we were at today if God did not come through. We would never be in this place today all over the world preaching the gospel if God did not come through for our lives because in the beginning stages it was God we need you and if you do not come through we will not survive. We will not make it. God wants to be that essential part of seeking in your life. And it's never an issue of time but it's always an issue of priorities. Always the issue of priorities. I always begin to tell it to myself that sometimes, uh, you know, things happen. You have kids, you have wife, you have, you have business, you have so many things that are moving around and, and you're like, oh, I didn't have time today. But God always put in my heart says, it's never about the time, it's about the priorities because if it's in a priority, you always make time. Some of us, you know, when we were, before we got into the relationship, we, we loved a person. Time was never a, a, an issue, right? Money was never an issue. I mean, if it was one hour of sleep, I'm, I'm, I got this. I was talking to Ed the other day and I was asking him, so how did you meet your wife? He says, oh, we met through this and this and this. And he's like, you know, then we started video chatting. He's like, I was like, okay. He's like, is that 12 hours later after video chat? I'm like, what? 12 hours later. But it's, it's never about time. It's about priorities. When you love something, when you seek after something, I mean, 12 hours to, to 24 hours, I'll do it. And that's what it is about God, us and, and, and this scripture that, that David reminds us. He says, I want to seek you at the best time. God, I want to give you the most precious time that I have. God, I want to make you my pursuit because my flesh and my soul longs for you. And without you, I am nothing. I want to challenge us as this next three days are coming up. Make it a priority. Make it a priority and begin to tell God, maybe I'm going to spend five minutes, you know, when I wake up. But I'm going to dedicate that time. God, maybe it will be an hour, whatever it will be, but God, you are my priority. You are my direction. You are my pursuit and you are my strength. Amen, church? You will either, there's two reasons that people always see God. It's either by choice or by force. Many times we become, start seeking God because we choose to. And we say, God, that without you, I'm nothing. Or by forces, when the problems of life and the calamities of life begin to force us to our knees and say, God, I can't live without you. We have a choice to make. We can either do it voluntarily or life will make us. Sometimes lives will bring us to your knees and we have to understand because you cannot live. I mean, I don't know if many of you guys, some of you guys fasted and, and you went three days without food and then you drink a soda. I don't know, everybody tried that? I did. Man, that, that hurts. That hurts. Same thing, same thing with our relationship with God. When we go so long, without our soul and our life being filled with God's presence, it begins to hurt us. You can't go far without God. Certain things that we are meant to be empowered to overcome begins to hurt us so much, begins to give us stomach ache, begins to become sick because those problems that we were empowered to overcome because the same spirit that lives, the race Christ that lives inside of us, we don't have that. So when we come to those problems, those problems begin to defeat us. Why? Because we are so long without His presence, without His Spirit in our life, that these little things that we're meant to overcome begin to overcome us. Choose to see God. Choose to run after God. Choose to give your best time with God because from Him flow all the blessings of life. Amen, church? In Psalm 9 verse 10 it says, and those who know your name will put their trust in you. For you, Lord, do not forsake those who seek you. And Psalms 42 says, The Lord looks down from heaven and the children of men to see if there's any who understand, any who seek God. God is looking for people who seek Him. God looks upon this earth and begins to see, do you seek after me? Do you run after me? Do you pursue after me? And he finds those and he finds delight when we are going after him, when we love him, when we spend time with his word. Amen. In Psalm 34, 10, if you can uh, 
go with me to that scripture and says this that it says the young lion lacks and suffers hunger but those who seek the Lord shall not lack any good thing somebody say but those who seek the Lord shall not lack any good thing somebody want any good thing from the Lord come on those who seek the Lord shall not lack any good thing marriage is a good thing salvation of your kids is a good thing healing in your body is a good thing having more than enough and being a blessing to your neighbor is a good thing having good career is a good thing having health is a good thing Having a business is a good thing. Having healthy kids is a good thing. God says, if you seek the Lord, you shall not lack any good thing in your life. God wants to bless you, but it's founded in our seeking and our pursuit after Him. Wherever you're at in your life, God wants to bless you. God wants to prosper you. God wants to deliver you. God wants to heal you, but we have to understand that we cannot do it on our own. You know, I, I love driving a car and it's always on E. I'm like, man, I'm going to make it. I'm going to make it. I'm going to make it. But there's days where you just don't make it. And you're sat in the freeway and you're just one of those guys when you drive like, oh man, look at that guy. Yeah. It's like, God does not want you to be always on. I'm like, oh, I'm going to make him only. I hope I make it to Sunday service. Hope I make it just when. No, God wants you to uh, early. Will I seek you, God? I'll pursue after you. My passion is after you. My love and my heart is after you, God. Without you, I can't do nothing because I know you're on my side. You're fighting my battles and I'm victorious in you. Matthew 6 is the most script, famous scripture says that but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and everything else will be added to you it's founded in your seeking God it's founded in your pursuit after God amen how many of you guys are going to be seeking God in this place God will not withhold any good thing from you see I, I consider myself as a good dad and um, I have kids they're half Russian half Mexican so it's chaos at the house my second year old will get what she wants. My, my baby, um, he always begs me. So that's, I like that one. Second year old, like if she wants something, she'll get it. And I'm like, put it back. She's like, catch me. <laughs> but those are, there are those relationships with God. And uh, by my, by my, Josiah is the smallest one. He, he always comes, if he wants something, even though it's like, he woke up, he hasn't ate yet, nothing. He wants a cookie. And I'm like, no, you can't have a cookie. You first got to get milk. But, and then he's like this, like, but babe, <laughs> he calls me babe. I don't know why. And then he starts crying. These big tears. I'm like, where do you get all these tears? Like for all these years, you've been crying. Where do these tears come from? Like huge tears. But babe, fine. I'm going to get you the cookie. Just don't tell mom. <laughs> My love for, for, my baby boy is evil compared to the love of the Father that he has for you. Jesus says it's evil because the love of the Father towards you is so much greater. We can't, we can't even fathom. Like, I mean, there's nothing I, I will not do for, for my kids. Nothing. But God says it's still evil. How much more God wants to prosper you in the things that you do. The family trauma that you're going through, God says it hits me more than it hits you. They're my kids. I know that you're, they're, they're, they're your kids, but they're also my kids. I paid with my blood for them. He said, I care for you. I watch over you. I, 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 my thoughts I have towards you, you cannot even number them. They're more than sand on the seashore. It, God's like, you don't understand the love I have for you, but you can't understand if you don't seek after him. And it's found in our pursuit. And God says, I will not withhold any good thing from you as long as you give me your heart. As long as you give me your attention, as long as you give me your pursuit, I'll begin to prosper. I'll begin to heal you and I will begin to work wonders in your life. Amen. When I end with this scripture, it talks in, uh, not end, but kind of ish. Second Chronicles 26 verse 5, you can put on the screen. It says that he, King Uzziah, saw God in the days of Zechariah who had understanding the visions of God and as long as as he sought the Lord, God made him prosper. 
I want you to underline the last part of that verse. It says that as long as he sought the Lord, God made him prosper. We have to be the people who seek after God. A king, as I understood that without God, I can't be a king. I can't do the duties. Yes, I might have my own skills. I might have wisdom. I might have education. I might have a PhD. I might go to pre-marriage class. I might take David Ramsey classes. I might know how to treat my body and be healthy. But without God, we cannot do nothing. We are left to our own destruction and our own weaknesses. As long as he sought after God, God made him prosper. In your marriage, God wants to make you prosper. In your health, God wants to make you prosper. In your finances, God wants to make you prosper. In your business, God wants to make you prosper. In your ministry, in your side hustle, God says, seek after me and I'll make you prosper in Jesus' mighty name. God is after us. God is seeking us. God is pursuing after us, but he's asking us to begin to seek him. To begin to go after him. In verse 15, as you continue reading this story, that, that God began to bless Zion. He began to create, begin to innovate, begins to have so many things in his life. And, and you begin to see how King Uzziah begins to have so much stuff in his life. But I want you to see in verse 15 and verse 16 says, So his fame spread far and wide, for he was marvelously helped till he became strong but when he was strong his heart was lifted up to his destruction we have to understand that God wants to prosper in your life but not at the expense that when we become strong we begin to leave God not at the expense when the God begins to prosper us we begin to say I don't have any more time to go to church. I don't have any more time to fast. I don't have any more time to give. I don't have any more time to go to home group. I don't have any more time to give to, to, to the church. I don't have any more time. And it says here that till he became strong, till his fame spread all over the world, that his heart was lifted up saying that, you know, it's me. I got this. I can do this on my own. That's why David in his word was always crying out to God and said, God, do not take your Holy Spirit. Do you know, yes, I did wrong. Yes, I did everything, but don't cast me from your presence and don't withhold your spirit from me. I won many battles. Yes, I was a great king, but your presence, Lord, is of everything that I have in my life and don't take that away from me. I might lose my kingdom, but not your presence. I might lose this job opportunity. I might lose this contract. I might get sick in my body, but God, don't take your Holy Spirit from me and do not cast me from your presence. And when we search after God, God will begin to work with us. And eventually, God restored the kingdom back to David. Why? Because he wasn't concerned about his circumstances that were falling away. Death was in his right, persecution in his left. But, God, but David said, I need your presence. I'm going to search after you. I'm going to run after you. If you take your Bible and if you open it halfway, you'll be able to see that it lands into Psalm 119, which is the longest chapter in the Bible. And that chapter, if you read about it, it's, it's all about God's Word. It's all about how David talks about, you know, God's Word is a light to my feet and a lamp to my path. He talks about that. I've hidden your word in my heart that I might not sit against you. God, be, David begins to describe so much things about the word of God that he begins to see. It's like David has become obsessed with God's word. Be, but it was because it was pursuit of knowing God. When we seek God, we pursue God, we have to understand that the praying and seeking after God is not separated from his word. It comes together. We live in the day and the generation that, that we are, have so much Word of God, so much Bible. I mean, you talk about every translation, you talk about audio, visible, printed on screen. It can read it to you while you drive, you sleep, whatever it is. But yet we're the most deprived generation from the Word of God. In Psalm, in Psalm 119, 104, David says, How sweet are your words to my taste, sweeter than honey to my mouth it's never that that it's boring you just haven't adopted the taste towards it 
I recently I gave up drinking coffee and Dr. Pepper. Those are like my, my, if you give me lunch without Dr. Pepper, I'll just, something comes in me. I don't know what it was. Hashtag I was delivered. So like I literally, I was like, Jesus will come before I'll give up coffee and Dr. Pepper. It's just, that's how it was. That's how literally addicted I was. And slowly I was like, you know what? I'm going to, I'm going to do this. And as time went by slowly it was like a week two weeks now I'm running like four weeks or four months whatever it is and now that I look at Dr. Pepper I'm like how nasty is this thing is I've been googling I'm like well how Dr. Pepper destroys your life I'm like that's right I, don't know, I feel like I'm just gonna go advocate for going against Dr. Pepper you know defund Dr. Pepper you know so it's like all these things now what happened to me besides me being delivered, is that my taste buds became adjusted to water. The Word of God before, it's to some of us people like, man, this is boring. It's just you haven't adopted the taste and the cravings for it. That's all it is. We have to understand that you build, you feed what you want to build and you start what you want to kill, right? Many times our, our taste towards the Word of God is bitter. It's like, man, I, I can't, I can't even look at it. How can somebody read it for enjoyment? This is boring. It is because you're full with different other junk. You're filled with politics. You're filled with, with, uh, with different news media, all these things that when it comes to the Word of God, you are already full and you don't have any more taste towards that Word of God. And, and in Proverbs 27, 7, I want you to read this verse says, a person who is full refuses honey, but even bitter food tastes sweet to the hungry. When you are already full with something else, the Word of God will be bitter to you. But even to the hungry, the, but, the bitter food tastes sweet. You know, I've given myself a challenge for, it's already been about a year. I say, you know, what if I walk away from social media and I challenge myself to begin to just memorize God's Word, begin to study God's Word. I'm like, man, honestly, like I, I'm a pastor's kid. I was literally born in the second pew of the church. We didn't go to the hospital, but I was like, I was like, how can somebody just read? I see my dad many times, you know, fall asleep with, with God's Word on the, on the Bible. I'm like, man, that's how, how does that happen? And I begin to distance myself and say, you know what, let me pause on this and let me just try to learn from the Word of God and by God's grace today I, I'm, I'm addicted honestly I, never in my life I would ever imagine myself being addicted to memorizing God's Word even as funny as it sounds when I go to the bathroom I'm like reviewing scriptures I'm not even joking you like sometimes wife is like walks in, like what are you doing I'm like going through Jeremiah <laughs> literally uh, you can whatever you do it this is fine There's no judgment here <laughs> because when you begin to s starve what you want to kill and feed what you want to build God begins to give you that appetite God begins to give you that desire for his word you begin to look at God's word it says I cannot live without it I need God's word I, I, I need to meditate in God's word it is sweeter than honey to me I, I need God's word in my life because without it I can't do nothing and the Bible says that God and his word are one if you want to visit God if you want to be with God spend time with his word memorize his word make it a part of your life because you have to understand all these news and things the politics the guns all this, it's just depressing honestly you look at cnn yahoo whatever you want it's so depressing it's like man like you log in you read and you're like man, why am i so down because those things they deplete you it's just junk it's like this thing that you've been running on empty stomach for so long and then you just you just start drinking energy drinks and it's just it just it just destroys your, your stomach. God wants to put an appetite in your life. God wants to restore the hunger in your life to seeking Him. 
running after him, to being with him, to be able to be a people that said, God, early will I seek you. God, my soul thirsts for you. God, my flesh longs for you. Without you, I am nothing. God, as long as I live, I'll run after you. I'll chase after you. I'll seek after you. And God says, as you seek me, I'll make you prosper. As you run after me, I'll begin to move in your life. You will see the miraculous. You'll see power walking. You'll see miracles, signs and wonders following why because you know Christ you spend time with him your hunger and your thirst is about him alone and that is where your strength comes from amen church how many of you are gonna seek after God how many of you guys are gonna run after God how many of you guys are gonna say that God you are my thirst you are my desire you are my love you're my pursuit you are my passion without you I am nothing God if you take your spirit away from me I'm left to my own weakness do not cast me from your presence do not take your Holy Spirit from me and God will give you the desires of your heart in Jesus mighty name amen hey thanks for watching this video if you enjoyed this content and this was a blessing to you would you help us and hit thumbs up so that it could help more people to discover this video. It costs you nothing but it can go a long way to help with the algorithm. As well as if you're not subscribed to our channel, hit subscribe, click on the bell so that you can be reminded each time that we upload videos. Thank you so much for being a part of this community. If you're interested in learning more about Hungry Gen, our internship, our conferences, deliverance and so many other things, go to HungryGen.com for more information. And as always, remember, Better is not good enough, the best is yet to come.